Hey guys, it's Katie with Bowie Macaroni Kid. Thanks for joining me on our step-by-step -step tutorial of our three projects created at last week's duct tape sponsored creative party. First up is our s'mores campfire kit. Next, we have our sensory cool down box. And lastly, my personal favorite, our coin drop decision maker. Stay tuned, the first project is coming right up. Hey guys, Mason is going to be joining me for this next project, which is our s'mores campfire kit seen here. I was browsing our local craft store when I came across this print in duct tape, s'mores pattern, covered in graham crackers, marshmallows, and chocolate. I knew that I wanted to find some way to turn this into a project for our duct tape sponsored creative party. I started looking in the wood aisle and came across these cute wooden totes. Then I found these. All different toppers, stars, hearts, flowers. I'm sure they're used by most for some sort of princess wand. However, when I saw them, I thought roasting stick. Grab a marshmallow, put it on the end, big enough handle for the kids to roast their marshmallow without burning their fingers. So let's get started in turning this into our s'mores campfire kit. Mason has decided that he wants the metallic silver for his handle and the s'mores pattern for the bottom. The bottom. And what color did you want for your roasting stick? Um, golden. Golden, okay, and golden for that. So let's grab golden. All right, so first we're gonna get started with doing the handle. You can paint the handle or you can use the tape. If you're gonna use the tape, I suggest doing that first because if there's any loose edges, you wanna use the base to cover it up. So I'm gonna start ripping. You can start putting on, sound good? Yeah. All right. Now smaller pieces are easier to work with when doing this sort of project where you have to fold it over and bend it to fit. If you need help, so this is how mommy's going to do it. I'm going to start like this and then look, get it as tight as possible and then flatten it down. Okay. There's really no right or wrong for this. It doesn't have to look perfect. It just has to be functional. Some more pieces. You ready? Okay. You ready? Yeah. And Perfect. Say, always do with a grown up. Always do this project with a grown up. Yep. Always do this project with a grown up. Well, this is probably a project that they can do on their own as long as they're not using scissors yeah, or anything use sharp. Handle. You do know how to use scissors. You're right. I can just use handle with for duct tape. Yep. You're right. Where would you put these? Yep, on the other handle. Looking great. You done? You need one more piece? There you go. Do you need any more after that, or are you good? Good. You're good? Alright. Yes, top. Top's done? Alright, let's squeeze it down to make sure we've got all of our edges are flat and sealed. Get a good squeeze. Perfect. Alright. Now I'll show you my trick for this. Or you, of course, can do it in lots and lots and lots of individual little strips. It really doesn't matter. But for when I completed the sample, I took one longing piece and ran it straight across. Kept my duct tape attached, kept unrolling, and wrapping it around. Can I turn one? Yep, you can do the next one. Then once I overlapped, I pulled out a little more, ripped, and I had one nice long running piece. 
Mine's going down. Mason's going down. All right, do you want to do one long running piece? Yeah. All right. Put it in your mouth. All right, ready? You got it? Uh-huh. All right, I'm letting go. You need some help? Yeah. Yeah? All right, so I will hold this down right here for you. Okay, and you pull on the roll. Yep. So you want to unroll it, baby. There you go. Yep, got here. Right there. Okay, now turn your box. Lay it down. Yep, perfect. Perfect. And now we're going to grab here and we're going to give it a good tear. Can you finish tearing that? Perfect. Good job, babe. And then flatten it down. Now nice. it's time to start creating our S'mores Campfire Kit Roasting Stick. Mason has chosen the gold metallic tape from duct tape. So what you want to do is have your kid cover all of the flat surface of the roasting stick. You can trim it up to create a nice clean look or you can allow them to tape and then fold down the edges. Once your roasting stick is completely covered, be sure to leave the actual stick part without any duct tape. That's the part that's most likely going to get hit by fire and you don't want it to start to melt the duct tape. Once it's complete, you'll see that it's ready for the kids to hold on to and add a marshmallow to the end. But how do we attach it to our box? So you want to take a piece of duct tape. Which color would you like? So you're going to want to take a piece of duct tape and rip a square that's just a couple inches long. You're going to want to fix it to your box. However, in order for your roasting stick to slide in and out without getting stuck, you're going to need to create a barrier. In order to do that, you're going to want to rip a thin strip of duct tape wide enough to cover the roasting stick itself. Place that in the middle of the duct tape and you'll see you've now created a section where it's not sticky to touch. This is the part that's going to lay over the roasting stick and allow you to slide it in and out of the box. You're then going to want to attach that piece to your campfire s'mores kit and take your roasting stick in order to get enough distance between allowing it to slide in and out, fold it over, and then press firmly to secure the tape. Now you'll see that you can slide your roasting stick in and out with ease. And there you have it. There is your s'mores campfire kit ready to go. All you need is some graham crackers, a few more marshmallows, and of course, some chocolate. Have fun everyone. Bye. Hey guys, so we're getting ready to start on our cool down feelings box, which is a wonderful project for those of you who have little ones who sometimes just have a little bit extra feelings in their lives. Lily, do you have lots of feelings? No. No? No. Are you sure? No. Okay. So, uh, sometimes when Lily is feeling overwhelmed or sad, um, instead of just sending to her to her room to cool down uh, with nothing, I can give her a feelings box, let her have it, and she can self-regulate uh, using the items that are in. So what I did is took a regular uh, blank craft box, which you can find at any local craft store. If you don't have one, you can always use a shoe box. Um, of course, it would be a little bit larger. These are perfect. They're blank. Uh, they're usually about a dollar. And then you can decorate and fill it as you like. So as you can see, we have some of Lily's favorite items in here. We have paper, crayons, we have some putty, 
We have a sensory ball, which is great for them to roll back and forth, get some stimulation there, and then some, um, some dough to play with. So what we're going to do is decorate it however your child likes. Now obviously when they create something on their own, they have more fun using it uh, versus when you make it for them. So we can let them decorate it as they want. And Lily wanted what color? What color do you want, Lily? Purple. Purple. All purple? Yeah. All purple. So we're going to start decorating. Now obviously you want to make sure that when you decorate this box, you don't seal it shut. Um, I know that that seems pretty obvious, but it happens. You get caught up in the taping, and you just over tape, and then you can't get the thing open. Why? Why? Well, if you tape it shut, how are you going to open it, silly? I can't because. Because? Because how? How would you open it? I can't because. You're funny. So, hey Lil, you want to put this piece on? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, ready? Super sticky. Push. Oh, good job. Good job. All right. So then if your pieces are extra long, you open it up and you fold them over. Can you fold that one over? Perfect. Good job, babe. All right. Let's do one more piece there. And now I'm going to do it that one. You want to do the last one? Okay, yeah. ready? Ready? Push. Oh, good job. All right. Now let's open it up. And can you fold it over again? Perfect. That side. Perfect. 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 I'll do the left side. Yeah, we're gonna do the back and the bottom. I'll do the left one. Right there. Yeah. All purple. Uh -huh. All purple. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All purple. Let's see. Good. I'll do it. Okay. Ready? Boop. 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 Hold it down. I'll do it in the middle. The other one. Any other colors? Yeah. Yeah, which ones? Um, pink. Pink, like this one? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Do you want big pieces or little pieces? Bigger. Bigger pieces? Mm -hmm. Whoa. Okay. Like that. Yeah. We'll push it down. Perfect. And that way. And that one too. Oh, here. Put that one where you want it. Beautiful. More on the top or on the sides? Um, on the sides. On the sides. Okay, where are the sides? I see. Let's see if this is the top. Where are the sides? You want to do inside? Yeah. Okay. And now the yeah, one. Alright. Do you want to do any more colors? Yeah. What color? Green? Yeah. Okay, we can do some green. Do you want to do the bright green? Um, yeah. Okay. So this is another benefit of duct tape having hundreds of colors and prints and metallics. There's literally a color for every kid. For every project. Anything creative or innovative that you come up to use duct tape for, they'll have the right color print design for you. You're welcome, Lily. And now they on the towel with um with um sparkle one. A sparkle one? Yeah. Like this one? Yeah. Okay. I like it. And now I go away. Yeah. Okay. You can just fold it like that. There you go. Ta da! Ta da! Ta da! And, and now one more yeah. One there. Okay. Here. Oh, that's a big goose. Ooh, I like 
blanket. Perfect. Do you want to the top? Did you see this? Yeah. What, um, what is that? Candy. Candy. Oh, yeah. One, two. You want the bubblegum one? Okay. I like bubblegum. I like bubblegum too. You're welcome. Perfect. It is yours. That's your box? Yeah. Yeah? And are you going to put your treasures in it? Yeah. Yeah? You want to do more there? Yeah? feelings box. Obviously Lily and I can continue decorating it and making it truly her own. But I don't think there will be any confusion as to which box belongs to her. So it's yours? Yeah. That one is yours. You're right. So again, once you're finished, you can fill it with all of the stuff that your kid loves the most. It's also a great project to take in the car with you. Um, so we have paper, we have crayons, we have some dough, we have, what's this? Um, I don't know. You don't know? Slime. 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 Send ball. A sensory ball. Yeah. So, uh, hope you have fun and stay tuned for our next project. Bye. Mom. Say bye. Bye. We will be working on our coin drop decision maker. This is by far my favorite project of the three. Drop the coin and it decides for you whether it be your snack for the day, what family outing you're gonna take, or even what TV show you're gonna watch before bed. So, let's see what we're gonna need. Cardboard. Personally, the thicker, the better. Packing boxes work great. You can also use pizza boxes. I'll be leaving instructions in the article and the notes below for what dimensions I used for my project. But of course, if you want to make a smaller version or a larger version, that works great as well. Back piece, two side pieces. You're also going to need a platform that your coins will fall on, dividers that will sit on top of your platform. I personally use three of them, creating four spaces, and then half oval shapes, which you're going to cut slits into and slits into the base that will create a more sturdy base for your coin drop. Push pins. You can get really creative and get the fun colorful kinds, but I just used clear. You're going to place those into the board once you start assembling, and that will create the pattern for where the coins can fall down. You're also going to need, of course, a quarter, or a beam token works too. And to prevent the coin from falling forward and not having to design your coin drop to lean backwards, I came up with a laminating sheet. I took a regular three millimeter laminating sheet, ran it through the laminator with nothing inside. It gave me just the clear laminated sheet of plastic. You can also use a five millimeter if you'd like something a little thicker, but the three millimeter has worked great so far. So, First step, all of these cardboard pieces need to be covered with some duct tape. You have plenty of options, solids, metallics, prints, there's something for everyone. So let's get started in covering all of these. Once that's done, I'll get back to you and then we can start a right, project. Alright guys, now that you have all of your cardboard pieces covered in the duct tape patterns, colors, 
metallics of your choice, it's time to start assembling. So first you're going to take your backboard and your two side pieces and you're going to attach them. Another tool that you'll want to have with you is a good pair of scissors. Or, for this part, honestly, sometimes I just find it easier to give a good old tear. You're one, going to want to get your side piece as close to the backboard as possible when connecting. And then you're going to tape it on both sides, connecting it. So you're going to want to take the inside too. This will help make sure that it stays together and lasts a long time. So as you can see, it starts to fold in. Don't worry if it starts to fold out some. When we put it all together, it'll bind it. So next, we have our second side piece. We are nice and connected. This is the back of your coin drop decision maker. All right, so now that you have your back and sides, you're gonna to want to attach your base pieces. So these are your two half circle or my shape, kind of more like an egg, base pieces. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take them, go right in the center and cut a little slit. You're going to want to cut it about three quarters of the way down. So if you can see there. And you're going to want to do that in the other one as well. Then you're going to want to go to your backboard, the bottom, and about a third way in on each side, you're going to cut a slit as well. creating two slits in the bottom. And then you're gonna wedge your pieces into the base. Now if it doesn't fit, because the duct tape obviously thickens the cardboard, what you can do is go right next to that other line you cut and cut another thin line, creating almost a skinny triangle where you cut out a tiny wedge like that. That'll allow it to fit in better without ripping the cardboard or bending it to where you're defeating the purpose of having a stabilizing base. Now that we can get that to shimmy on in there. There we go, there's our base. There's no need to tape them down, but if you want to, of course you can. And there's our base. All right guys, now it's time to add your platform. This piece is going to connect your sides in and sit right above your base supports, just like that. So let's get taping. Now, for connecting the sides to your base piece, here's a little trick that I do. I take a tiny piece, just like this, and I run it across the side to where it then overlaps with my base. 
I fold it so that it's touching, but as you can see, I've got this overhang here. That's where I take my scissors and I cut along my platform. And then I take that piece and now I can fold it in so that it's still there supporting it, but it's not overhanging. And I'm gonna do that with both sides, just to stabilize the platform to the walls. There we have it. Our backboard is now connected to our sides and our platform. The last thing that we're gonna add is our dividers. Now I did three. You of course can do more and that'll create more divisions for your corner or whatever coin you're going to use. But you wanna make sure that you have enough room for whatever coin you're using. So if you're using a corner, obviously if you have too many spaces, it's not gonna fit in the space. So you want to make sure you measure it out beforehand. So if you're using a dime or a smaller coin, that's fine. But just make sure you check that beforehand. So next, we're going to tape down our three dividers onto the board, again, using pieces of tape on either side to hold them upright. Now because these are pretty and patterned, I'm going to use that same pattern tape. Number one. Number two. And number three. So now you have your divided sections. Next, if you want to have different color tapes dividing your sections for different things, now is the time to put your tape in place. It's just easy. So let's start putting in our push pins. Now your push pins are in place. If you want to lean the board back and do a test run to make sure it works, you can. Okay. 
Next step is your plastic sheet to prevent the coin from falling out. You're going to want to lay it across and get a rough measurement. It, this doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it pretty close. So once you see about how wide you need it cut, you're just going to take it and cut the plastic. Now it'll slide down in front of the push pins, laying flush against them, but in between the side walls. In order to get the plastic piece to slide down into the dividers to prevent the coin from falling out at the last minute, you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut slits into the dividers right where the plastic lies. Not all the way down, but just enough to make sure that the coin falls into them. Now wedge your plastic piece into the dividers. It's easier to do it if it's laying down. Now that your plastic piece is in place, you can trim the top of the excess. Then you want to take tape and secure the plastic piece to the side wall. There you have it, and now your coin drop decision maker is ready to go. Have fun!